Hi, this is Kevin Kerr for Uncommon Wisdom Daily TV. Throughout 2011, the markets have been on an incredibly wild ride. One sector that has been volatile, but very resilient lately, is the natural resource markets. Almost all key commodities took a swift and sharp downturn in the last month or so, as panic traders liquidated accounts. However, the markets recovered just as sharply, as savvy bargain hunters swooped in and grabbed some very discounted opportunities in the commodities. Meanwhile, the commodity bears have silently returned to their caves to growl yet another day. Now, don't get me wrong, there is certain to be another round of selling pressure and the inevitable corrections that we always see with every long-term bull market. But the opportunities in commodities for the long-term investor remain solid. As countries around the world race to secure precious resources for their growing populations, few places offer as much of a variety and abundance of vital commodities than Africa. For many people, Africa conjures up images of extreme poverty, violent natural disasters, and almost non-existent infrastructure. There is no doubt there are major problems. After all, 70% of Nigeria's 140 million citizens live on less than a dollar a day, so many investor fears are valid. Even so, much of these conditions are changing rapidly as the investment opportunities in Africa are simply too great to pass up. And China is the one country that sees that. As the global demand for everything from oil and precious metals to agriculture and soft commodities explodes, Africa's vast resources are becoming more and more vital, especially to China. In fact, a whopping one-third of Chinese oil now comes from Africa. And business is booming right now in Africa, thanks mostly to vast and growing investments by China. Trade between African nations and China surpassed $120 billion in 2010. And in the past two years, China has given major loans to poor African countries and is investing in everything from major agriculture projects to drilling and mining. According to the Heritage Foundation, Estimates are that between 2005 and 2010, about 14% of China's total foreign investment went to sub-Saharan Africa. The fact is that Chinese appetite for resources is voracious, and items like Zambian copper, Nigerian oil, Tanzanian timber, and South African platinum are in high demand. Chinese investment has paid for extensive roads in Ethiopia, financed the building of numerous schools and hospitals in Liberia, and rebuilt Angola's once famous Benguea Railway and set up a road building program in Mozambique. Chinese investment has already rebuilt large parts of Africa and parts of Africa have much better infrastructure than they did even a few years ago. So are the political and economic risks in Africa worth it? Well, African companies are some of the most profitable and fastest growing in the world, hands down and therefore companies and investors who dare to do business in the region stand to profit mightily. Look, you have economies that are growing 5% to 6% annually, and it's routine to find stocks that are trading for five to six times earnings, which is more or less non-existent in the U.S. market. You can often find banks that are trading for less than even book value. The opportunities are everywhere. One idea is to invest in multinationals that have already have operations in Africa, such as Nestle and Unilever. There are also several key ETFs. The Market Vectors Africa Index reflects the Dow Jones Africa Titans 50 Index, which contains a broad exposure to Africa. And the iShares MSCI South Africa Index is based on the MSCI Index for South Africa, which is the most developed of all African economies. No matter how you choose to take on some opportunities in Africa, the risks remain but the rewards could be well worth it. I'm Kevin Kerr from Uncommon Wisdom Daily TV. Thanks for watching.